Good afternoon. Welcome to Four Essential Back to School Instructional Strategies. We're so glad you're here. As we wait for a few more people to join us, find that question box that's in your control panel and share with us where you're joining from today. So it's so great to see everyone joining. I know it's probably the back to school crunch for the middle part of the country. We're glad you're here. A few people just jumped on. Find the question box that's in your control panel. You can access it by that orange rectangle with the white arrow. Type in that question box where you're joining us from. We love to see where everyone's joining from today. I am coming to you today from Oklahoma City. So smack dab in the middle of the country. I've been on a whirlwind tour this summer, providing professional development at conferences and for organizations for the last 10 weeks. So it's nice to be at home. We're happy to be back on our schedule for office hours that occurs the first and third Tuesday of the month. We have about two more minutes before we get started. So jump in that question box, share where you're joining from, and then we'll get started in about a minute and a half. Uh, North Dakota, California, welcome. How's the weather where you're at? We had a cold front come through here in Oklahoma a couple days ago and it's like mid 80s and lovely compared to the 100 degree temperature we had before that. Ah, uh, 80 in North Dakota, nice. All right, about one more minute and we'll get started. If you just joined us, find that control panel, open that question box, share where you're joining from today. We'll get started in about 30 seconds. We're glad you're here. It's always fun to see where people join from, people from all across the country. So New Jersey, North Dakota, California. Uh, we usually have people from almost all the states joining us. Welcome, we're so glad you're here. We'll give people about 30 seconds to join and then we'll get started. We're glad you're here. These office webinars um, take place the first and third Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central and they're always recorded. Ah, oh, 70 is in the California area. Nice, great weather. All right, it is 2 p.m. So with that, we're going to get started. Welcome to four essential back to school instructional strategies. We're gonna talk about four essential factors to get students engaged and building rapport for back to school. If you've never been to one of these webinars before, <clears throat> be warned, <clears throat> excuse me, they are highly interactive. We have lots of ways to participate as we learn with and from each other. Uh, so get ready and here we go. <clears throat> to get us started, scan the QR code with your smartphone or um, I'll put a link in the chat and you're going to finish the statement. This session today will be a success if what? Finish that statement. So you can scan the QR code. There is a link going in the chat momentarily. And finish that statement for us. This session will be a success if what? I'm gonna go ahead and click on that QR code. The link is still in the chat if you need it. And let's see what our definitions were. Like how do we finish that statement? So as it opens up, we're using the EdTech tool Mentimeter. I am using the free version. Um, it has multiple response types from open-ended, which you use today, to multiple choice, to ranking, to true false, um, to word clouds. So it's a great EdTech tool to jump on and use. So some responses we got today. This session will be a success if we all participate, of course. Uh, if you learn a new way to help make um, you a better teacher, absolutely. 
My goal in all professional development, besides the fact that I want to learn with and from everyone else, is just to take away one thing, one thing that I could take back to my classroom, to take back to my practice, uh, to help me be a better teacher, to help me work smarter, uh, work better, right? So these are some ways that we can uh, gauge the success of this session today. And you're thinking, what does that have to do with four essential back to school strategies? I'm gonna get there, just a second. Okay, jumping back to our slide deck. First, our goal today is just to explore these four strategies that are great for back to school. My name is Mandy Green. I am the manager of professional development and instructional design at Goodhart Wilcox Publisher. Um, and we do these webinars the first and third Tuesday of every month. And we're so glad you're with us today. So why did I ask that question? This, success, this session will be a success if. Why does that matter? Well, this can be used at the beginning of a lesson or any type of learning experience to really help our students and learners articulate and share their expectations. So you just shared your expectation of the session with me. So it serves as a place as a facilitator of learning or a teacher or instructor. I know what my students and learners are expecting of myself and the lesson that day. But this type of activity sets those clear learning goals and also can be a formative assessment that can also help us reveal students' questions and concerns along the way. So the first strategy today is setting those clear learning goals. And we use this session will be a success if. Next, grab something to write with and maybe it's something to write on. And you're going to draw this image on your paper. Now, if you know my background, I started out teaching kindergarten uh, and my students used to always say, Miss Green, that is not a fish, but we're going to pretend this is our fish for today. So you make sure you have a triangle, a straight line for the body, and then at least three lines coming off that are going to be your fins. So we're drawing a fish essentially. Okay, so I hope you have your fish ready. Here's the next part. In the triangle, the head of the fish, you're going to write back to school strategies I need. That's all you have to do. Just write back to school strategies I need. So that's going to go in the fish's head. Okay, cool. Got that? Awesome. Let's go to the next section. Now, on the fin of each fish, so ideally you have three, you're going to write some strategy that you want to use this school year. It can be a strategy you heard of from a colleague, you might have heard of at a summer conference, it might be a strategy that your school or organization wants you to implement as an instructor. It could be, heck, that first one we just talked about with this session will be a success if. It could be that as well. So think of three strategies that you want to use. Write one on each fin of your fish. Then, to make this a little more collaborative, if you'll find that question box again in your control panel, and if you're feeling willing, share with us one strategy you want to try this next year in your class. So for example, one strategy I have for myself as a professional development facilitator is to add in more opportunities for feedback. I really want to focus on feedback from participants and myself with sessions. So it looks like Teresa wants to add in choice boards. Those are always really great strategies that can help increase student choice in the classroom and possibly different ways for them to allow their voice to be heard in that learning environment. Absolutely. What other strategies are you writing on the fins of your fish? Share with us in the question box. So I mentioned feedback, so I'm gonna start looking at different strategies to provide more feedback, opportunities for feedback. Uh, Teresa is gonna look at choice boards, increasing student choice, um, and maybe how they show mastery or ownership of learning. Awesome. I'll give you about 30 more seconds. Find that control panel, open that question box, share with us which strategies you want to try this year. All 
All right, we're almost done. We have our three fish pins filled out. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna close the question box. And you might be thinking, okay, Mandy, what does this fish have to do with back to school strategies? So our first strategy that we did talked about setting clear learning goals. So getting information from our learners so that we have a clear understanding of our expectations. This second strategy is all about sharing information. So how can we set up our students for success to be able to share information and ideas in the classroom? One way that we can help suit our, set our learners up for success so that they will share information in the classroom as part of discussion is through something called a fishbone. And that was your fishbone that you just drew on the paper. It's a graphic organizer. It helps scaffold learning because you can have learners and students write down that information before they share it with others. This is a really good strategy that encourages students to kind of explore the cause of a particular effect or outcome. Right, so students can write some type of outcome or something that they're studying in that fish's head. So we just use instructional strategies I need or want to use. Then all the fins or branches out are the fish bones is where you can record possible factors. That's where we recorded those individual strategies that we as instructors want to try. This also acts as a really good note catcher if you're having class discussion or lecture. It also acts as a great note catcher for debates and really provides that written response to help identify which factors kind of play a significant role in learning. So the second strategy today is to allow students to share information, get them talking about content. And one way we can do that is through the fish phone graphic organizer. Okay, how was that? Are you ready for number three? Okay, good. We know with any good instruction comes some type of formative assessment, somewhere that we allow students to kind of check for understanding. Now, one way that we can do about this is go through um, something like a poll. So I'm gonna launch a poll. You can participate in the poll. It's distributed the poll right now. It's gonna pop up a question, just how comfortable are you with instructional strategies in general? Are you green? Very comfortable. Yellow? Somewhere in the middle. Or are you red, not comfortable at all? Now, the thing about polling like this is it's completely anonymous, right? So we're still collecting some responses, it says. So it's completely anonymous. We know that anonymity helps increase student engagement, which is what we want. We want to increase student engagement. We also know that as instructors, this helps us. For example, I could use this same strategy with sticky notes. Maybe I have a green, yellow, and red sticky note in my class. Then students are working on some type of assignment and they could just stick the sticky note on their desk or table to kind of let me know where they're at in that activity. Are they green? I mean, they're very comfortable. They're, they're very competent in what they're doing. Are they yellow on this activity? and might need some assistance, or are they red? And maybe need some reteaching, need some more instructions, need some more guidance. That's the way that we could use sticky notes or some type of color-coded system to help us realize where our students are at in the process of learning. Now, we used a digital poll today, which is great and perfect to use. You can also use something like sticky notes. So another instructional strategy is called stop light stickies. This really helps us evaluate and check for understanding, provides a quick formative assessment, and it can also help us activate prior knowledge and students really start to self-assess. So you could use red, yellow, green sticky notes that kind of correlate with their comfort level of understanding on the new topic or even practicing a new skill. You can also maybe after some brief reflection or discussion, have students choose a color and then also write questions or comments on that color sticky note. Then students could place that sticky note on a board or poster or chart. That would really then help you as an instructor see where the class is at, to see how confident they are. It also could help the class see how confident their classmates feel in comparison to how they feel. At that time, as an instructor or teacher, you can then address those questions or concerns without singling out any specific students. 
So another strategy that we could use to collect that check for understanding formative assessment would be the stoplight sticky strategy. All right. Now we know that with any good lesson, we're going to have clear lesson goals. We're going to have an opportunity for students to discuss and share information. We're going to have those check for understandings. We're also going to have some place in there for feedback. So let's talk about feedback. So to get started with feedback, scan the QR code. I'm gonna drop the link in the chat once again. You're going to access Padlet. I'm using the free Padlet version here. And on the Padlet, you're going to see three columns. So you're going to, once again, think about this session so far in the 15 minutes we've been together. And you're going to get ready to provide some type of feedback. Ideally, you want to put one note in each column, and you're going to do that by clicking on the plus sign. So you can scan the QR code using the camera app on your smartphone or click on the link that's in the chat, two ways to access it. When you get there, you'll see three columns with directions at the top of each column. And you wanna add one response in each column. Okay, are you ready to check out some of the responses? Let's see where we're at. Don't forget the link is still in the chat if you need it. So we're gonna access our Padlet. What's great about Padlet is there's going to be three kind of little bugs, icons at the top. It's going to let me know that people are working on this. So I can see people are actively typing in responses. So in the first column, tell or write or type something you like about this session. In the second column, I want you to ask a question you have about this session. And in the last column, give one suggestion to improve this session. All right, so let's see what we have in that tell something you like about this session. It feels good to be getting ideas and getting ready to go back, right? There's nothing like that excitement around back to school. Um, like the new ideas, good. I'm glad you're getting some new ideas. I'm glad it's being recorded so you can rewatch it, absolutely. Um, it's quick and to the point. That's what we love about these office hour webinars. They usually average about 25 minutes and they are quick and to the point. Now, let's see what you have under ask a question you have about the session. How much time does it take to make some of these tools like the Quick Poll or Padlet? And how can you save them and organize them for the future? Well, with Mentimeter and Padlet, it takes just a few minutes to create the questions and the response types. And the great thing about those two programs is they save them inside the software themselves on the a website like padlet.com so you can recreate them or you can clear the responses to use the same form again so i use this form with a different feedback session and i just cleared all the responses so today we have a fresh page with new ideas coming in um, i will share my email address at the end of the session and you can always email me if you need any assistance getting some of these ed tech tools set up or if you just want a few tips or tricks i'm happy to communicate with you to get that going uh, where did you get the tool for polling? So today I used the polling tool inside of GoToWebinar. So it came with the GoToWebinar software. Um, but there are different polling ones from Poll Everywhere to Mentimeter are also some great polling options for, for your class. Um, will we be getting a certificate for attending? Absolutely. It will go to the email address that you use to register for this webinar. And as always, if you don't receive it, just let me know and we'll get you one um, printed off. And in the last column, y'all, so give one suggestion to improve this session. This is the part of feedback that requires a little bit of vulnerability on our part as instructors or facilitators of learning. This is the scary part, right? Because we're always concerned about what other people think, but realizing that this information is just to improve it, right? It's one person's suggestion, it's one person's idea, and when we create these learning experiences for our students, we're creating it for the masses, right? So this is just feedback to take in, kind of mull it over, see how it fits to make other decisions. Um, it's the one that we as instructors, myself included, are always a little nervous to receive, right? But realizing that it's for the greater good and we're here to, we're always learning and we're always improving as educators, right? Um, that's the great thing about uh, professional development is we get to learn with and from each other because we're all 
uh, excellent expert educators, and we have so many valuable experiences and ideas to share with each other, and sometimes we just don't have that time in our traditional school settings. Uh, here's some ideas for improvement, to have a list of websites to help facilitate these ideas. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree too, right? Those are great ideas and ways that we can make these webinars more beneficial to you as learners. So anyways, now I'm going to point out some key words before we keep moving on. The first column starts with the word tell. That starts with the letter T. The second column starts with the word ask, which begins with the letter A. And the third column starts with the letter G, starts with the word give, that starts with the letter G. You got it, right? Okay, so T-A-G spells tag. So our last instructional strategy that we're focused on for back to school is going to be called Tag Me Feedback. So this is an acronym that really guides our students to provide feedback to their peers, either written or verbally. So this idea of tagging can be done at any point in the lesson. It can even be done on a whim if you just kind of feel that there needs to be a point of self-reflection or maybe there's some peer feedback needed at this moment in your lesson. It's really easy to remember tag with tell, ask, and give. So it's great for active engagement. It really helps activate some of those critical thinking um, skills, thinking about analyzing, evaluating information, right? Just some things that can take place with feedback. So just a review. Every good lesson is going to start with those clear learning goals where we use this session will be a success if we use the tool Mentimeter for that activity. Then every good lesson is going to have an opportunity that we can share information. We use the Fishbone Graphic Organizer as a way to scaffold learning to prepare our students for success as they shared information with their co-workers, co co-learners, peers, etc. Then we also know that every good lesson is going to have some spot where you can check for understanding in the lesson. We use the idea of stoplight stickies to see where our learners were at in that moment. Then every good lesson is going to have some spot for feedback. We use a strategy called tag me to provide feedback where we could tell what we liked, ask questions for, to clarify, and then also to give some valuable information for improvement. We use the, the um, tool Padlet to complete the tag me feedback session. And then last, we have POMS. What does POMS stand for? Have we gotten there yet? Not yet, but here we go. Here comes POMS. The point of most significance. So in the question box, which is in the control panel of your GoToWebinar, you're going to think of one thing that stuck out to you, or what was your point of most significance for today's webinar? and share that in the question box with us. Like I said, we love to learn with and from each other because we have so many cool and great experiences to share with each other. So take a moment in the question box and type out one thing that stuck out to you today in this webinar so that we can learn with and from each other. Let's see what's coming in the box. I'll give you just a second. Oops, my question box just disappeared. Sometimes it takes just a moment to get it going. There's always a little bit of a lag time in there. So what cool fact or what was your point of most significance for today? It could have even been an idea that you shared on the Padlet. Let's see. Um, thanks, Teresa. Yeah, I appreciate some learning some new ways, tools where students can be more anonymous, engaged, right? Because we know anonymity can increase engagement. Absolutely. Yeah, with larger classes, sometimes it's more difficult to get those conversations going. And some of those um, tools that we use today can really help conversations going. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, I like the stickies are a great resource for your class. Oh, good. Yeah, with your English language learners, uh, regular, gifted, talented, all in the same class. Absolutely. It's a great way to kind of scaffold and differentiate um, as you need in your class. Yeah, excellent idea. Thanks for sharing. So you're kind of getting a hint of ways that we can use these strategies in your class, some things that stuck out to you today. Uh, we love to hear how you're using some of these tools so that others can try them as well. Um, some of my best ideas were not my ideas. I stole them from other teachers I worked with and other educators, right? 
So I'll give you just a second. Any other ideas you'd like to share with us? We love to learn with and from each other. I don't think I see any more coming in. All right, I'm gonna close that question box right now. I'll give it just a second. Uh, you might see some things I put in the chat. So we're gonna keep going and finish up. We're gonna start wrapping this up. Uh, we have about six minutes left. So, um, this is uh, Goodhart Wilcox, right? Um, and these are some different websites that we have. So this is our main website. If you ever uh, need a free copy of a textbook or you want to sample a textbook, you can scan that QR code. Uh, the link is also in the chat. And you can preview a textbook uh, resources that you need for your classroom. Uh, the easiest way is probably to click on that link that is in the chat there for you under preview. Then if you like professional webinars like this, we at GW have GWPD that we provide all across the country. This is where I've been. I've been on like on a 10 week tour across the country, at different conferences and schools and organizations presenting. Um, this was just a 30 minute snippet of PD. It's super fast and furious just to give you a few, few tools that you can use tomorrow. But we do have a whole website already set up. And on that website, uh, you can sign up for a free PD newsletter that goes out the first of every month that has all these office hour dates listed in it. Um, it has different PD options. We also have a brand new video that's in the center of the page that kind of captures what in-person GWPD feels like and looks like and sounds like. So you can kind of view that there as well. Then last but not least, if you have any questions, I would love to answer questions for you. Um, you can type them in the question box and we'll get them answered for you. You can also email me. My email is there on the screen. Feel free to take my email and email me your questions at your own time. Uh, I respond to all of them and will promise to get back to you. Um, don't forget that you will be receiving your certificate of attendance in an email, the same email that you use to register for this event in about an hour. Um, if you don't receive it by the end of the week, please feel free to email me and I will get you one um, made up so that you have a certificate of attendance. And last but not least, join us on September 19th is our next office hour webinar. Activate Wonder, we're going to explore one strategy to increase inquiry in our classroom. So with that, I'm going to open up the question box. I will take questions. Thank you so much for spending 30 minutes of your back to school week with us here at GWPD. We are so glad that you attended office hours today, and we hope to see you on the 19th for Activate Wonder, where we're going to look at inquiry in the classroom. Have a great day. Have a great back to school season, and we'll see you next month. Take care, y'all.